Hi, my name is Nathan, and today we're going to do a comic book review of Gunslinger Spawn, issue number seven, brought to you by Rated Comics. Let's get to it. We begin this new story arc where previously in Gunslinger number six, after evening of hospitality at Clown Seeker Base, it then turns violent quickly and in a gangster kind of way. Gunslinger is back on the road searching for those from his past. And we see that he meets a lady along the way that's trying to teach him how to catch a hitch. And you know, they have the history together, they're flirting with one another, and you can tell they probably skinny dipped or two before. Maybe not, but she ends it with, you know, I gotta go. I think you're good looking. I'm headed to the river to clean up, but you're more than welcome to come join me on skinny dipping if you like to. He's gotta pass on her offer because there's a destination he needs to get to. He catches a hitch with the truck driver, but the drive is hours later and he drops him off in the middle of nowhere. And the driver is like, I feel kind of bad leaving you right here, but this is where you wanna go. He's like, yeah. Thanks for the hospitality, my friend, but I got my reasons. And those reasons include returning to a place where he recently tangled with a female called Dakota and where the clown transformed himself. So we're going back to the roots over here. He come to this area because it was a place he used to know well when he was a boy. These woods also served him well when he needed a refuge from his abusive father's fist. It's also where he left a few of his belongings, like his rifles, his ride, and those wolves too. You can call them his friends. So he greets the wolves, good to see you, but I can't stay, got a few things to take care of. And then a voice from the distance, like, well, who's gonna take care of your wolves then? The stranger's voice sounds like a man that smokes three packs of cigarettes a day, but more unnerving is that he somehow didn't make a noise getting this close to Gunslinger. Can I help you with something, says Gunslinger Spawn? And he just grins as if nothing. A sinister kind of grin, like, you don't know what you can help me with, boy. But Gunslinger's like, all right, I'm on my way then. And this brother's like, nah, man, your pets don't want you to go. That's what you're trying to tell me? Gunslinger don't say nothing. He just mounts his bike and gets ready to leave. And he's like, I said, your pets want you to stay. And he throws a boulder at his bike. And this brother transforms into a, a man wolf. 1,200 pounds of monstrosity with fearlessness that drives the wolves now obedient to him. For tonight, we feast, says the man wolf. They're bloodless, trained on Gunslinger. And he already threw a massive bolt at his bike, but Gunslinger defends himself. This creature isn't what's foremost in his mind. And this brother just lunges at him and bites him in the arm. Instead, there's an anger that started to dwell inside of Gunslinger, one driven by the same damn question he's been asking himself since he arrived in the century. How? He keeps repeating that same question. How is it that these enemies are able to track him down? The Dark Angels, Dakota, Clown. It's almost like they got a GPS up his ass and they know exactly where his ass is gonna be. So they fight and they go at it. And Javier's like, okay, you wanna play? Let's play, let's do this. And he channels his inner strength to defeat the beast, to fight the beast. And his rage is what unleashes against his eight foot man wolf. And with every slash of his Bowie knife, he keeps asking himself, how, how the F are you fighting me? How are they doing this? And he slashes him in his head. But as in any closely fought battle, there's always a time when one needs to worry about what's staring at them in the face. Besides his man wolf right here. Gunslinger has been around animals his whole life. He knows when they're injured, bleeding, or cornered, they'll defend themselves on sheer instincts, whatever means necessary to survive. And as this beast's eyes turn brighter, so do Gunslinger spawns. Guess what? Until the symbol on his chest begins to burn with flames so white hot, it tears away at his flesh. And I don't know what it is, it's some kind of mystical power, but both warriors for a brief moment attempt to catch their breath. And Man Wolf was like, they want you to walk away from this. They say they need you alive. So remember tonight because next time I'll be in charge and I won't walk away until you're dead. This will be the last time Conover lets his prey escape. And with that, he disappears into like a majestic display of magic that blankets the night sky, leaving in his wake a giant burnt symbol once he's seen before, a mark seared in the gunslinger spawn's memory long ago. It's a message from those he was hunting in the 19th century. And that's referencing Gunslinger Spawn issue number one. But you can also check out that issue in the playlist or at the first story arc of Gunslinger Spawn if you haven't caught up. With that being said, we continue on with the review. Gunslinger goes up digging it because it was for exactly for times like this that he bored weapons in a handful of spots. Because soon he may be in need of each and every one of them. He thought he wanted to find a way back to his own period, but that symbol, the one scorched in the grass, signifies that the worst of his enemies may also have been pulled through the time rip that brought him here. If that's true, 
he'll need to do two things. One, he needs to prepare himself in any way possible with as much firepower as he can. And two, he needs to heal himself because that burning sensation that he got earlier from whatever the heck that was, he's obviously more than just a man wolf. He goes himself into an ice pondy water as he heals himself. As he attempts to ease away that pain, he knows trying to go at it alone won't get him what he wants, so he needs help. So he goes to a bar, my kind of guy. I need help in life. I'm going to a roadhouse bar, baby. Woo! And guess who's there? Jessica Priest gazing, locked in on the mirror behind the bartender too because she's eyeing a target. Who? We don't know. Guys try to talk to her, screw off. I've been there before. What guy hasn't approached a girl at the bar and gets told to screw off? It happened to me. Come on now. So he approaches Jessica Priest. Hey darling, you need company? And she's like, oh no, I'm not interested. Not yet, but you will be. He introduces himself and tells her we met before under different circumstances, under different costumes. You gave me a motorcycle. And that's referencing Spawn issue number 313. And she's like, oh Oh, you? How'd you find me? Ne never mind. We, we ain't got time for that. This isn't a good time. And he's like, look, I'm just looking for a few things. And she's like, I'm working right now. You're about to blow my cover. So leave. Javier is like, okay, under one condition I'll leave. Tell me where I can find Spawn, the one you call Simmons. And she's like, man, that'll take time. And like I said, I don't have time for that. I'm undercover. So their chatter is interrupted by this brother right here that tries to, you know, be Captain Saber, Jessica Priest. And like, hey, looks like this man is bothering you. You need, you need help? No, I'm good. Then I'll be over at that table behind me. But, you know, I would love to dance with you later. Perhaps we can grab a dance later, you know? And Javi's like, you deaf or just stupid boy? She says she's good. And this hulking man stops dead in his tracks. And she's just embarrassed. Like, why are you doing this? Not now. I'm trying to be undercover. And you putting my business out there like that. Well, girl, you're in a roadhouse with black leather outfit. How else you not going to get your business out like that? But jokes aside, this brother goes up to Javier like, you looking for trouble, mister? Be more than happy to oblige you with that. Depends, mofo. Though, I only like to fight men. You think you can find one for me? <laughs> I love this kind of pettiness right there. And she tries to break it up and Javi's like, I'm just gonna blow smoke in his face. Cause that's what I do. And we already know unless this guy is like a demon or something underneath, Gunsling is gonna take him out really quick. Who is this guy? And Jessica's like, oh, he's just an ex-boyfriend, had one too many drinks, that's all. We were just leaving. So I ain't gonna get that dance? I'm afraid not. That's what she tells the guy. Then run away, you little freaking coward to hide behind her skirt. Don't wanna see you around or your whore girlfriend again. And that just sets Gunslinger off and stops him in his track. He's like, what did you call her? And I hate to do this, but that is literally where this issue ends. Literally. That's the end of this issue. Honestly, yes, I I dug it. I love this new threat, whoever's hunting Gunslinger spawn. Definitely kind of a tease of a cliffhanger. I mean, but then again, perhaps this hulking guy might be a demon. Look at that sinister shadowy panel when he gets all pissed that he's not going to get his dance. You know what I mean? It was definitely a fun read. But hey, you know, we just got to go along for the ride and just get tagged along with it. But with that being said, link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. Gunslinger Spawn, issue number seven. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below, let me know. And also, if you like the content we're throwing up, you know what to do. Don't be shy and don't be stingy. Here are rated comics to do awesome comic book reviews, comic book related content with the occasional comic book giveaway. Thanks again for watching. Until next time.